Hey, this is Santa Claus, and I'm just kidding. This is a Maybelline, and you're watching Emo Maybelline McDub. And today we're going to talk about a Victorian house that's getting haunted by a little more than people. Now, this Victorian house was built in 1890, and it said that there used to be a jail in the basement, but then later on they turned it into a bed and breakfast. It's kind of creepy. But uh, apparently it's well known for being haunted and everything, which is why people come and stay at bed, the bed and breakfast, which is kind of cool. It's kind of like those um, haunted hotels near Salem, Mass. And those are interesting if you ever want to go. I'm sure they have websites on that. Those are kind of fun. Okay, so jail in the basement. Um, there's still bars on the windows and this play, this Victorian house is in Oklahoma and this was around Christmas time which is why I figured you know Christmas right right okay so these two girls um, I believe they're sisters or best friends um, I'm gonna go with sisters they go and they spend a few nights at this bed and breakfast because they know it's haunted and they're interested in stuff like that and they have nothing else to do on Christmas, so might as well get a little spooked out. Sounds like a good time. So they go and they, and they stay the first night at the bed and breakfast, and the one sister, which is what we're going to be focusing on, um, she picks this room, and her sister is sleeping across the hall from her, and it's got, you know, like the fed, the um, four bed posts, and very fancy, you know, all oak and she spends the night and she wakes up in the middle of the night hears something you know it's probably just a bird or whatever and so she goes back to sleep and the next morning she wakes up and she feels uneasy um, she has a sense of like jealousy or envy and it's just she's having really weird emotions and right women <laughs> So she's having really weird emotions, and she tells her sister, and her sister's like, oh, you know, whatever. It's just stress and Christmas, you know, Christmas is stressful. So they talk to the owner of the bed and breakfast, and they kind of get a little more background. And the owner tells them that there's three ghosts haunting the bed and breakfast. One of them is a man in black. Um which has the emotions, most of the emotions connected to him. And there's the woman in a yellow ball gown and she has a kind of saddened or a longing feeling connected to her. And then they have, which is really weird, a cat ghost which I thought was kind of interesting. I was like, oh, kitties, they can be ghosts too. I wonder if hamsters can be ghosts. Don't want that thing nibbling on me. Anyway, so there's three different ghosts, and um, they say that the guy rotted away in the jail in the basement, and that's why he's got some anger and some just different emotions and then the woman was said to be um, one of the ones who visited the significant other in the jail and that's why she's kind of saddened because you know people die in jail and then they leave people behind and then of course they die and they always want to go back and haunt bed and breakfasts so they spend another night there, and the sister wakes up in the middle of the night, gets attacked by one of the spirits in a spherical ball form. It just kind of shoots right at her. So she runs and she jumps on her sister's bed and was like, you wouldn't believe what just happened to me. I'm really freaked out and everything. And the sister was like, you know, there's been... I thought there was a cat running around, but I had a 
she said that she had a cat on the end of her bed, you know, curled up in a little ball like they do, sleeping on the feet. And the cat was sleeping at the end of the bed, purring. And that's all she could hear was just this purring cat at the end of the bed. And she flipped on the light. There was nothing there. And so she was kind of freaked out. So she was looking around this room, and then the sister comes in, jumps on the bed, and starts yelling and saying that she saw something. So these two sisters are just looking at each other like, what is going on? So the next night, the sisters go to bed, and they're just, they're leaving their doors open just in case one of them has another incident. They can run back and forth because they're right across the hall from each other. So one of the sisters goes to sleep. I don't know how, but she goes to sleep and she gets woken up by a male's voice. So she looks at the end of the bed and she sees a little boy sitting there holding the cat. Creepy. Kids are just creepy. No. So this little ghost boy is holding this little ghost cat and the cat the kitty's purring and purring and he's petting it. And she looks over and she sees this other boy. So there's two boys, just one sitting at the end of her bed and the other one is standing near the doorway. So the sister, very almost like a whisper, calls out to her sister and the sister I guess was already awake or something because I don't know how she could hear a whisper from across the hall. So she comes over to the doorway, her doorway, and she looks into her other sister's room and she sees the boy, but she doesn't see the one holding the cat. So she sees the boy standing near the door and she goes to approach the door and the boy disappears and the boy with the cat disappears. So she flipped on the light, and the sister laying in bed was like, did you see that? Because I just saw that. And the sister's like, I just saw that. So two sisters really freaked out. I guess that's what happens when you stay at haunted places. I guess you kind of have to prepare for that. So I don't think they stayed too long after that. I think the kitty, ghost kitty running around, purring, which would be kind of cute. Kind of freaked them out. Especially, I don't think they were expecting two young boys. I'm not sure why the boys were there. I could understand the man, the man in jail, the woman visiting, and ghost cat, which would just be fun. I'm not quite sure why the boys would be there, but if you have a idea on why they would be, I'd be, love to hear it. If you guys have any ghost stories you'd like to send me, you send them right over. And you can always catch me on this Skeptics Corner on the Best 5 Minutes channel, which I posted a link last time, so I won't do it this time. I bore you with links when we have ghosts to talk about. Anyway, so this was the Victorian house story. Might want to check it out. And it's the same link from last time. So if you have any stories, send them in. Thanks!